So when I started to get into OpenGL, I wanted sound and music. Once I started to Google it, I found out that there were certain library options, but there were license restrictions. For example, it meant that you couldn't sell a game above a certain value. I wanted something that if it came to the point where I was going to sell something on a commercial basis, that I could do that and I didn't have to worry about paying loyalties or anything else. And I stumbled across OpenAL. So I started Googling things like sound options for OpenGL and various different things. At the time I was using Allegro 5, I ended up stumbling across SFML, which is similar to Allegro 5, but interestingly, SFML is a module based system. It's got about five or six different modules and I just wanted the audio module and it can be used directly in any C++ or C application and I think various other languages as well. So it was perfectly ideal for just using for OpenGL and it's pretty easy to use. And on top of all that, not only is it a sound system that we can use for any purpose, including commercial purposes, it's got loads of cool features, including 3D sound and volume attenuation and different things that you can do. You can change the pitch. So because I'm using OpenGL, I'm going to be using the first episode of the Quick Start series, which was just a fairly quick tutorial just to get you up and running. It gets a graphics window running and we're going to be adding sound to that. So it's a minimal graphics application, not even using shaders or anything. It's just a window with flashing colors, but then we can add sound to that so first thing first is we need to download SFML. So if we type that into the browser, so let's do that now, SFML, there it is. And click on the link. You might want to just have a quick read of the description there. So click on the link and this is the home page. So now we need to click on, let's click on learn first of all, and let's click on tutorials, just so we can see about those modules that I was mentioning before. So as you can see, we've got the systems module or system module, we've got the window module, graphics module, audio module, the one that we're gonna be using, and we've got a network module. So we're just interested in the audio module. So let's go to download, and we are gonna click on this link here, the SFML 2.5.1, latest stable version and we're going to, well, I'm gonna download the 64-bit. As far as I know, pretty much every computer these days is gonna be running 64-bit Windows. So let's go for the 64-bit option, click download. And once that's downloaded, you need to unzip the folder. So literally the only thing we need to change in the project settings is to go into the linker and go into the input. And we just need to add in the um, let's have a look. We just need to add in the sfml-audio.lib file. So just add that in as a third entry after the first two and click OK. And then we can click OK on that window. Now for the folders, we've got the, let's go and have a look where we are. At the parent level, within the original project solutions folder, we've got the includes and we've got the libraries. If we look in the includes, we've got the SFML folder. It's only these five items here that we need. So you can get those from the original includes SFML folder, which is this one just here. And I'll show you where that is from the zip file that we've just unzipped. So it contains all of these by default. We don't need all of those. We just need, as I said, we just need these. It doesn't matter if you leave the others in. If you want to just copy the whole folder over, it's absolutely fine. I just thought that people would be curious to see which ones are the essential ones that we do really need. The other ones are obviously related to the other modules and things, the graphics module and the network module, for example. So we just need those five things there in the includes folder. And if we go now to the libraries folder, so we've literally just got the one lib file, which we put in our library folder, which we can get from here. And as you can see, it's this one just here. So we can just drag that over. Um, um, there we go, in the lib folder. And we're done copying the, um, oh no, we're not. So within the X64 folder, within the release folder, where the EXE is, we need to copy over three DLLs. So we can get those from the SFML's bin folder. So within there, you can see that we've got the OpenAL32, We've got the SFML Audio 2 and the FFML System 2. Copy those over and then we're done. So now all we need to do is just add in a few lines of code and then we're going to compile it and run our first 
audio program. We need to add in this include line, which is the sfmlaudio.hpp. All we need to do then is to create the sound object, which is this line here. Then we need to create the sound buffer object, which is this line here. Then we need to open a file. So for playing a sound as opposed to playing music, we're going to load in a WAV file. Then for the sound that we're going to be playing for that character, we then set the pitch, set the volume, assign a buffer to it, set the minimum distance, which I'll talk about in the next tutorial. We set the attenuation, which I'll talk about in the next tutorial, and simply set it to loop, which is true, and then we play it. For the music, it's even simpler. So just a quick interruption, if you've made it this far, then please don't forget to subscribe. Cheers. It needs to be a specific music file. I tried playing a WAV file, I forgot WAV is just a, a container. So instead, I just converted it to an OGG. So I'm gonna stick with WAV files whenever I play a sound, and I'm gonna stick with OGG when I play music. We can set the position of something called the listener object and we can also set the position of each of the individual objects within the game and then as things move around we get relative volume changing depending on where the listener is compared to the particular source it could be a character in a game it could be a, a plane flying around so now the only thing left to do is to compile the code and then we can run the program so we've got some weird sound going on what have i done here so i'm using the animated red value as the pitch value for the music track once the red value goes above a certain amount that the green starts to get some value as well. If you look at these numbers, you'll see on the left, that's the red value. Once the red value gets above one, it can't go any more red, so then the green takes over and we start adding green into the red. It's just a silly little trick. So one of the things that's really interesting is that SFML is running on a separate thread. That means that even if we pause the program, which we can do by clicking in the console window, and it will carry on playing, it literally pauses GPS the program, rescue. the red is no longer GPS animated. Rescue. So GPS. if this was a game, it would seem like the game had frozen. I can stop at any point, so if I stop it when it's running fast, wasn't really fast, was it? 